بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير وآتينا موسى الكتاب وجعلناه هدى لبني إسرائيل ألا تتخذوا من دوني وكيلا درية من حملنا مع نوح إنه كان عبدا شكورا وقضينا إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لتفسدن في الأرض مرتين ولتعلن علوا كبيرا فإذا جاء وعد أولاه ما بعثنا عليكم عبادا لنا أولي بأس شديد فجاسوا خلال الديار وكان وعدا مفعولا ثم رددنا لكم الكرة عليهم وأمددناكم بأموال وبنين وأمددناكم بأموال وبنين وجعلناكم أكثر نفيرا إن أحسنتم أحسنتم لأنفسكم وإن أسأتم فلها فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليسوء وجوهكم وليدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوا أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تتبيرا عسى ربكم أن يرحمكم وإن عدتم عدنا وجعلنا جهنم للكافرين حصيرا إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما Masha Allah, such a beautiful recitation, Masha Allah, Tabarakullah, Qari Mu'ad. 
really, it's a great pleasure to have you with us again. Qari Mu'ad joined us in Qari Mu'ad joined us in Ramadan, where we had more than fifty big, big, famous Qaris reading the whole Quran, doing a khatam together, and it was such an amazing experience. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept this from us. Uh, Qari Mu'ad, just before we go to our teacher, inshallah, to begin the session, may I ask you to share some words to encourage our young brothers and sisters, uh, especially as you have become hafid of the Quran with such beautiful rec recitation and on track in obtaining your ijaza, your chain, your license to the Prophet So, so first of all, uh, it's an like every thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is, like you should never leave Quran. You should keep on reading it. You should learn it, tajweed, read it, and then hif. Then you should take uh, the sanad, and then you should learn the, the ashra qara'at, and then you should learn the tafsir. Like, it never ends. So you should hold on the Quran and keep on learning it. <clears throat> Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair. Thank oh, yeah. you very much. And young brothers and sisters, of course, there's an opportunity for you to study uh, us, ourselves. There's many places you can study. But uh, just to mention, of course, this session is also organized by Al-Haramain Madrasa and Institute. We have centers across London, UK. We have in Manchester also. And we also teach online. So there's so many opportunities for you to learn, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Qari Mu'ad. Thank you very much for wa iyaakum, wa iyaakum. your contribution. Allahum. May Allah accept Allahumma it from you. Ameen, ameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. All right. Let us go, inshallah, to our Sheikh, Sheikh Ayaz Husi, who will be, inshallah, taking the session for today. Sheikh Ayaz Husi is a graduate from Medina Islamic University in Saudi Arabia. He is an authorized khatib and da'i from the Ministry of Religious Affairs, and he is an instructor at Al Haramain Madrasa. Uh, Sheikh Ayaz, if you can unmute your mic, inshallah. Yep. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Sheikh? Hey Allah, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Feeling great. How are you doing? Wallah, alhamdulillah. Amazing to see you, Sheikh, with beautiful background, with the, <laughs> the books, etc. May Allah increase your knowledge, inshallah. Amen, amen. Barakallahu feek. Sheikh, uh, so Sheikh will be speaking in about, for, for about 45 minutes. Of course, it will be an interactive session. And then we will also have a quiz, inshallah. Okay, guys? So look out in the chat section for the links to, this, to the uh, quiz, which we'll give to you slightly later on. Sheikh Ayaz, I hand it to you, inshallah, to take it over. Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd fa inna khayr al-hadith kitabullah wa khayr al-hadi hadj al-nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد First of all, we greet you with the best of greetings of what? Sheikh Abu Ayman or Sheikh Abu Ayman has greeted us and of course Brother Ibn Nidhar has greeted us the greetings in which the people of Ahl Jannah uses as salam and salama the greeting which was taught to Adam alayhi salatu was salam by the angels, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for verily it is assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh means peace and blessings and the mercy and the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all. But it does not only mean this, it means you are free from my harm physically and verbally. Assalamu alaikum means you are free from my 
harm as well. What a beautiful greetings, Allah Akbar. Beautiful greetings, salam, free from. So it means peace be upon you, as well as literally it may mean you are free from my harm physically or verbally, inshallah. What a beautiful greetings. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every time, every day, we give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah for each and every blessing that we have. Our parents, our mother, our, our house, our cars, our food, our drink, our, our neighbor, our friends, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our, our physical age and everything that you have. You need to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. How do you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, when, when uh, Sheikh Abu Ayman asked me about uh, how am I doing? I replied, Alhamdulillah. When he asked the reciter of the Quran, how are you doing? What did he say? Alhamdulillah. What did Alhamdulillah mean? Alhamdulillah means thank you, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah means all praise be to Allah. All praise be to Allah. So that's something very, very important in our life that we have to thank Allah for each and every blessing of what we have, Alhamdulillah. If we are saying we have to say Alhamdulillah, what is the first verse? that you say when you pray? Who can tell me? The first verse, when you say Allahu Akbar, Naam. You can unmute yourself, Ammar. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, if you um, select the person to unmute, because if we allow everyone to unmute, it will be chaos. We have over- All right, I will select them. I will select them to unmute, inshallah. No problem, you guys hit their name. All right, for that one, okay? Okay, let's go for, okay, I can't find Ammar. Okay, Ammar, you've been raising your hand. What is the first thing when you, when you open your prayer, when it comes to the prayer, what is the first thing that you say? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So you say, Alhamdulillahi <coughs> Rabbil Alameen. So straight away, straight away, when you say Allahu Akbar, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many times do we pray in a day? Five times a day. And in, in one prayer, how many times do we read Surah Al-Fatiha? Allah Akbar, almost per day, minimum of 17 times, we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We mean that we're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every blessing of what we have. And one more question. And what do we say when we wake up in the morning? What is the dua? What is the dua when we wake up in the morning? All right. Okay, we've got Zayan. Go on, Zayan. Okay, very good. So this is a dua that you mentioned. It's a dua that you're thanking Allah. But before that, it is a very good try. But I'm sure you're pretty confused. You're pretty confused. Let me ask Umama. Let me ask Umama, and then you remember the, the dua or what we say when we actually wake up. Where is Umama? Okay, Umama, I can't find her name anymore. So I ask Mus'ab. Go on. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'd ma anatana wa ilayhi nushur. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Very good. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'd ma amatana. Oh Allah, thank be to you. Thank you, Ya Allah, that you gave us life again. Beautiful, MashaAllah. And then the dua, that what we say after we eat, that you mentioned, Alhamdulillah, the dua that you read after you eat, 
as well is thanking Allah. So we thank Allah day and night. Day and night we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, at the end of the of the inshallah of the talk, you will come to know why we need to thank Allah for each and every uh, blessing of what we have, inshallah. All right? ta'ala. So what we want to speak about today is the uh, the masjid of Al-Aqsa. We've been hearing about Masjid Al-Aqsa. We've been hearing about people talking about Palestine and what is Masjid Al-Aqsa? Why is it so important to the Muslims? We always hear Masjid Al-Nabawi. We always hear the Kaaba. We always hear Medina. We always hear Mecca. But now what we're hearing is Palestine. We're hearing Palestine, Masjid Al-Aqsa, Jerusalem. We are hearing all these. But I never heard about that before. Where did that come from? We never emphasize upon Masjid Al-Aqsa. Today, inshallah, we're going to know a little bit about what is that significant of Masjid Al-Aqsa in the history of Al-Islam ta'ala. Let me tell you something. One of the verses that the reciter read was, In the Quran, Yahdil in Latihi Akuman, or you bashir on Mokminin and Ladina Yamaluna Sali Hati and Nahum Adran Kabira. In the Hadal Quran, Yahdil in Latihi Akuman, for verily this Quran, it leads you towards Latihi Akuman. It leads you towards happiness. It leads you towards success. It leads you towards whatever you want in your life. The Quran will lead you there, inshallah. So beautiful recita uh, recitation from the brother, which actually make us ponder. The Quran is something that actually makes us know stuff. And what we're going to speak about, we're going to speak about Masjid Al-Aqsa. And guess what? Masjid Al-Aqsa is mentioned in the Quran. It is mentioned in the Quran. So, and in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, inshallah, we're going to learn a little bit about what is Masjid Al-Aqsa bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. Question. Question. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, let me just put all your hand down. Who can tell me who can tell me one or two lines about what did they know about Masjid Al-Aqsa? What do they know about? Okay, we've got, uh, oh, I got Hudayfa here. Hudayfa, go on. Hudayfa, I unmuted you. No problem. Let me go for. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Yes, go on. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Everything is the same Hi. life as you. Um, I know that Masjid Al Aqsa was the in the was built in the direction of the Qibla. Okay, very good. It was the, the Qibla of the Muslim. That's nice. All right. It All right, very good. Good try. Very nice. You got it, you got it right. And this is one. Number two, maybe I can choose because I can see a lot of hands are being raised. Let me, Aisha Azra Ahmed. You're unmuted. If you can. What do you know about Majid Al-Aqsa? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, I know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam went there before Isra al-Miraj and gathered all the prophets to pray. Wow, that's, that's so true. That's very nice. So you got a good information about that. That's beautiful. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Let me ask one more oh, because I can sit up oh, and raise. Oh. Yeah, and then mute yourself when you finish. Sumaya, Sumaya Sudeira.
Gunsmeyer? Um, uh, uh, the prophet um, uh, was taken on like a horse with wings to the Masjid al Aqsa, and that part of the journey was called Al Isra. Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Very good indeed. Very good, Masha Allah. All right. It is one of the holy masjid. Very good, Insha Allah. I just need to check this hand call. Yeah. Bismillah rahman rahim what we want to speak about, inshallah, is the significance of Masjid Al-Aqsa. We know that the Masjid, uh, uh, the Masjid where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stayed in his town is known to be the Masjid Al-Haram, Makki. And then we have the Masjid Al-Haram in Medina, called Madani. And then we have Masjid Al-Aqsa, okay? So we know we have the three sanctuaries or three um, masjid that is sacred. They're known to be the sacred masjid in Islam that praying in these masjid are meritorious, are re big in reward. They are big in reward. So before we start, who can tell me who can tell me, or if you want to write it on the chat, what well, can, by the same time, I can actually uh, unmute one of you to tell me, what is the reward of praying in the Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca? Hmm. Yalla, Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. The reward is... 250 times more than regular prayer. If you, in Masjid Al-Haram, Mecca? It's a thousand times. In, in Masjid Al-Haram, Mecca, yeah? yes? Okay, very good. Very nice, okay. You can listen to the others uh, answer as well. Sabur, go on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The reward is a hundred thousand. Beautiful, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all opportunity to go and pray in the Masjid Al Haram in Allah Ta'ala. If prayer over there is equivalent to that much, mashallah. And this is a correct answer. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity of praying there. What about praying in Masjid al Nabawi. What about praying in Masjid al Nabawi? All right, Asif and Arafah, go on. Is it the same as um, praying as in Masjid al Haram? Okay, that's your answer. Good try. Good try. All right, let me check, check Zia. Go on, Zia. Zia. Okay, no problem. We can ask, okay, Thuwaib. Okay, Thuwaiba, go on, Thuwaiba. You've been raising your hand. The 1,000 rewards. 1,000 rewards, mashallah. So that's the difference between Masjid Haram and Makki and Masjid Haram and Madani which means that it's either 100,000 over there and 100,000 in the masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the reward that is equivalent to the number of prayers. And now we want to speak about what is the number, the, the, the equivalent of number in rewards praying in Masjid Al-Aqsa, in Masjid Al-Aqsa. All right, we're going to speak about this one. Okay, let me see. Asreen Fatima. 
a friend found them. Go on. Five hundred. Five hundred. And this hadith is Hassan, and this hadith is reliable. Mashallah, that a prayer in that masjid over there is equivalent to praying to five hundred prayers. That is so good. That is so good. You see, we compare the, the prayers to the other masajid that we have. You see that three masajid that we have, Masjid Haram, the one in Mecca, Masjid Haram, the one in Medina, Masjid Haram, the one in, 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 in uh, Palestine, Allahu Akbar, they are big in rewards. They are big in rewards. So it tells you how important it is in the eyes of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, great. Let me just put this over here. Okay. And I hope that, inshallah, you can see me uh, properly because I've got something on here. What we want to speak about today as well is the meaning of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Who can tell me what is the meaning of Al-Aqsa? Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa. Huh. Yeah, we're going. Amir. Yeah. That's good. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi amir. What is the meaning of al aqsa? Yani aqsa had. Yani ba'id. Can you tell me? You raise your hand. I, I think I've forgotten. Ah, uh, no problem, no problem. We all forget, we all forget. That's totally fine. That's good. Uh, what about Filza? Yalla Filza Altif. Tell me what it means. Do you know what it means, al -Aqsa? Okay, go on, Muhammad. The beautiful. The beautiful. Okay, we're gonna take one more. Yalla, Amar, Imran. Assalamu alaikum. It is the father's mosque. The father's mosque. Okay, okay. If I ask you a question, Amar, is that Medji far from you or is it near your house? Far from you. Oh, yeah, that Medji is far. <laughs> that Medji is not near your house, definitely. So that Medji is called Medji al Aqsa, you know, I mean, the maximum. It means the furthest. You know, it was far from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know, it had the Burak and all came and then to take the Prophet Sallallahu from there to Palestine to the station of Sidatul Muntaha, which we're going to speak about this one, inshallah. Al-Aqsa is the name of a very special place in the city of Jerusalem. Yeah, you know, we know very well that the Masjid Al-Haram is situated in Mecca. Then another Masjid Al-Haram, we call Masjid Al-Nabawi, it is situated in which city? In the city of Medina, Al-Mutahara, or Yathrib, or Tiba, or Taba. All those are names of Medina Munawwara. The name of Medina Munawwara is recently given. So it was known to be as Yathrib back in the days, or Medina al mutahhara which means the, the, the pure city of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And now, the Masjid Al-Aqsa is in a city called Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and guess what? The name Al-Aqsa is also known as Al-Bayt Al-Muqaddas. It is also known as Bayt al-Muqaddas. One question I would like to ask you, what is the meaning of Bayt al-Muqaddas? Mm. Yalla, Muhammad. Go on, Muhammad. Bayt al-Muqaddas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi Muhammad Akif. I think it means um, the sacred... Uh, I think it means the sacred house. Very good. Bayt al-Muqaddas. That's what they call al-Quds as well. The sacred house. It is known to be al-Quds. Very good. So if you look at the 
if you look at the uh, at the screen now, mashallah, you see you have it, all these parts called Jerusalem. Yeah. And then you will see that place called the sanctuary. This is what's called the haram. If you look at the dotted place, you know, the orange one is called the haram. Yeah, which is include the Qibli Masjid, the Burak, which was uh, tied. You see, if you look over here, it is known to be the Masjid Al-Aqsa where the Prophet Muhammad came and prayed. And this is where the Burak, it is known that an iron is put there still where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu tied uh, all the, uh, the, the animal uh, was, was, being, was being tied over there when the Prophet Muhammad came back from Isra. And we have the Dome of the Rock, which was later built. So it all tells you over here that this is the place where it is known to be the Baytul Muqaddas, known to be the sanctuary. Yeah, the sanctuary. This, all this is known to be Qibli Masjid as well in another, in another word, Alhamdulillah. Therefore, to get back to, yeah. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did go there, even though he did not travel over there on foot, but he went there in a miracle manner, which we're going to speak about that one, inshallah. Great. We know very well, you have just seen that picture now, and we said that this is in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is not in Saudi Arabia. It is not near Mecca or Medina, for verily it is toward the Sham, which is toward, it is in Palestine, you know, where Syria is, near Jordan is, where Lebanon, uh, uh, see, Palestine, this is the land where we say majority of you know, all the prophets and messengers came over there and they passed away over there as well. This is what we call, even called, this is the land where many of the prophets have actually been buried. But guess what? When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Isra wal Mi'raj, who can tell me the gift that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got? Uh, Usman, Usman Muhammad. Uh, Al-Kawthar, the river of Al-Kawthar. The river of Kawthar, okay. I can give you a point over here. I can give you a point, and I want another answer. This is the gift that we that the Prophet got for the Ummah that we're still using it nowadays. Majority, mashallah. Zahra Farhan gone. Uh, as salah, mashallah, as salah. Very good. So we got the gift of as salah, which is supposed to be 50, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced it to five. And guess what? When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came down after he's gone to Isra wal Mi'raj, I don't need to go and tell you the story of Isra wal Mi'raj. We can do that some other time. And, uh, but we know very well when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came down and then he got the prayer, yes or no? But when he got the prayer, he was asked by Allah to face towards one place, which was the masjid which you just saw now, Al-Aqsa. The masjid, Al-Aqsa. You just seen that masjid now. I want to ask a question now. Why do you think the Prophet Muhammad was ordered by Allah to face towards the uh, masjid, Al-Aqsa, instead of the Kaaba? Why? Yalla Uthman. Is it because that's where like um, all of the prophet prayed? Okay, no problem. Because all the prophet prayed over there. All right, Yalla Adam, what do you think about it? Oh my dear. Yes, Adam, I unmuted you. Because it is the Qibla. Okay, no problem. Yalla Zakaria. Because um, there was idols around the Kaaba at the time. Oh, exactly. Here you go. MashaAllah, Zakaria. Barakallahu feek. But all what you said, you're right. You know, the Prophet prayed, prayed over there. Uh, it, it was the Qibla. Yeah. Because, you know, because the Prophet Muhammad was sent to Asra wal Mi'raj, you know, 
it was from Mecca. So when the Prophet was in Mecca, there were still idols in the Kaaba. Yes, I know. Even though the Kaaba was known to be the Baytullah, it was still sacred, but inside there were idols. We Muslim, do we buy for do we bow in front of the idols? No, Allah, we don't. So at that moment, we were turning towards Masjid Al-Aqsa. So we call it the first qibla, the first qibla that was ordained by Allah to the Muslim to face towards was Masjid Al-Aqsa. It was Masjid Al-Aqsa. It was not the Kaaba. The Kaaba came after, for example, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went uh, after he left uh, Mecca, he went to Medina, to stable, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when you know, you know, the Tawheed was proper into the, the heart of the Muslim, and then later on, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the verse in regards to turning towards the, uh, turning towards the, the Kaaba. While the Muslim, they were in Medina, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed a verse that says, now turn towards the Kaaba while you are praying. Turn towards the Kaaba. You know what? While one day, while they were praying, it was, I think, I believe it was Salat al-Asr, while they were praying in a masjid, it is most authentic masjid Quba, not Qiblatin. So um, uh, while they were praying, while they were praying, uh, they were facing towards the, the Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa. And then when the verse came down, this is Islam. Straight away, وأطعنا, we listen, we obey straight away. And while they were praying, someone passed by and said that the, the, the Qibla has been, had been changed. And in one prayer, they changed the Qibla, subhanAllah. From Jerusalem, from Masjid Al-Aqsa to the Kaaba. So it shows you that this actually happened in Medina and not in Mecca. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So this is in regards to Masjid Al uh, the Jerusalem. In uh, what you call it? In in Palestine. Now we might be thinking, but we always know, we always know that we, every time we know that uh, uh, we read that the Masjid and Nabawi was built by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes or no? The Prophet Muhammad, when he went to Medina, he built the Prophet, he built the Masjid among the Sahaba. Yes or no? And we know very well that uh, uh, the Kaaba, yeah, was renovated by, like how we know, like Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, yeah, and his son, and his son, Ismail, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, yeah, so this, um, it shows you over, over here that the Kaaba was rebuilt by Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and his son, Ismail, and the Masjid Nabawi was built from scratch, by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Sahaba. And the Masjid Jerusalem or the Masjid Al-Aqsa was built. It is said that, of course, by, uh, because remember, remember that when Ibrahim والسلام, now we go back to history. When Ibrahim والسلام, left Iraq and then he went and actually and he lived in Palestine, you know, because in Iraq there was too many uh, idols. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Ibrahim والسلام, to go and actually um, to Palestine and then to, uh, to stay there and then they can preach monotheism. And it is said over there that Ibrahim والسلام, and his son Ishaq and his son Ishaq والسلام, that they actually uh, help in rebuilding the Masjid Al-Aqsa. And according to historians, and that the Prophet, the Prophet Adam alayhi salatu was salam was the one who built at the first foundation of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Masjid Al-Aqsa, Adam alayhi salatu was salam. But if you look what Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam did, that he went and then he rebuilt, you know, at the same spot. 
Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam rebuilt in uh, Jerusalem with his son Ishaq. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, it is said that he rebuilt. And between uh, the building of Masjid uh, Al-Aqsa and the rebuilding of the Kaaba was almost like 40 to 50 years, according to different narrations. So you see, Ibrahim with Ishaq and Ibrahim with Ismail alayhi and this is something that we need to know, insha'Allah. And we know very well that the land around Masjid Al-Aqsa is a blessed land. The Masjid Al-Aqsa was first the Qibla, was the first Qibla of the Muslim. And we said that the, the, you get 500 times more reward in praying in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Yeah. And remember that the Masjid Al-Aqsa, it did happen from time to time. Because let me tell you something. Uh, back in the days, they did not have like proper bricks with steel and everything. Then you put here, it will not get demolished. Back in the days, even happened to the Kaaba and it happened to Masjid Al-Aqsa. You know, they built it and then get demolished. And then the other prophets come and build it again and get demolished. Other prophets come in and then build it again and get demolished. Why? Because the way it was built, it built from it with sand and soil. Yeah, because, because of the process of weathering, rain and every wind then it just get demolished the other prophets come in and then they rebuilt on that side again same like Umar bin Khattab did when he came after the death of the Prophet and Abu Bakr and remember it is something that it is uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa something that and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke high about and we know very well where is, where is Masjid Al-Aqsa, and we spoke about it. It is in uh, Palestine, and it is not in Mecca or Medina or Saudi Arabia. Like every time we think of a sacred mosque with the, or Masjid, we think of Saudi Arabia. No, this one is actually in, uh, in, in, in Palestine, and you see the significance of it, where you could see, mashallah, a lot of prophets have actually play, uh, prayed over there. And one of the uh, one of the comments that I've got in regards to uh, who had actually, uh, how, why do we say many of the prophets have been over there? Look, if you, if you look at it, if you look at back at the history, you would see that uh, the prophets that had actually come, uh, they'll be from that area, you know, from that area of Palestine, you know, and from Iraq to Palestine, Palestine to Iraq, you would see that. And you could see from Ibrahim والسلام, and then you would see, it even said that Adam والسلام, went and built it over there. And then from Ibrahim والسلام, you have the son, Ismail and Ishaq. And, and then after Ishaq, you have Yaqub. And then from there, you had all the kids. And then they went to Egypt. Yeah, remember when Yusuf والسلام, you remember you all, you, you, you all know the, the story of, of, of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Yes or no? Yeah, the Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. But how was Yusuf in, oh, oh, in, in, in Egypt? And then see from there it's gone to Egypt. And then gone to Egypt. And then when what happened when Egypt became, mashallah, rich. Why they became rich? Because Yusuf alayhi salam became the minister over there. Yusuf became rich. And then what happened? Then the people, they actually went to uh, the left, you know, the Israelites, the, the left, they went to Egypt in order to live in Egypt so that they can have a better life. And then afterwards, you know, after Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam passed away, and then when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam again, Musa, Harun, Dawood, and Sulaiman, you see all these prophets, you heard of them, yes or no? Yeah, Musa, Harun, Dawood, and Sulaiman, and then you see, they're all in this area. So what happened? Musa alayhi salatu wasalam took the people in Egypt and then marched towards Palestine again. And then when they went over there, they stayed there. They stayed there. They were in the, the land before entering Jerusalem. So they were just right there. And guess what? Musa alayhi salam was there. Harun was there. And then from the same generation, Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam came and then Sulaiman came and then they carried on the rebuilding of Majid Al-Aqsa. So you see, and then after that, when they left, 
and then Isa alayhi salatu was salam came, Maryam came, you know, Zakaria came, Yahya came. So you see, all these prophets, where were they? They were there. They were there. So when you think about it, if I ask you a question, where there were more prophets? Was it at the place of Kaaba or at Masjid Al-Aqsa? Raise your hand. Okay. Ahmed, okay. Okay, you all say Masjid Al-Aqsa. Very good. MashaAllah. You all say Masjid Al-Aqsa. Okay, but which prophet? Which prophet came at the place of Al-Kaaba then? Which prophet came at the... Okay, someone says Ibrahim. But Ibrahim did not actually appear from a Kaaba. Ibrahim was in Iraq, from Iraq, went to Palestine, from Palestine, then he went to Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, as well as, <coughs> sorry, as well as Ismail. As well as Ismail. But therefore, when you look at the, uh, very good, mashallah. So when you look actually now at the prophets, who were Arab, yeah, it was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were all, they were the one who came as Arab was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the rest, they were from Palestine in that so where they were speaking Aramaic in different language. The one who spoke Arabic was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ismail was taught Arabic by the people from Yemen. Ismail was taught Arabic by the people of, uh, came from Yemen, the Gahtani, the Qahtani, they were the one who taught Ismail, and then from his progeny came the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, MashaAllah. And remember that all the prophets that we can, that we want to, uh, you can actually mention that they did have a lot of um, uh, interaction with that place, we see Adam, Idri, Adam, you get Ibrahim, Luke, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, Yusuf, you get Shu'ayb, you get Ayyub, you get, uh, you can get Musa, Harun, uh, Dhul Kifil, Dawood, Sulaiman, Ilyas, Zakaria, Yahya, Isa. Uh, you see, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also did go and participate in that, being present in that, uh, in that land. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, this is what happened this tells you why it is so important. Why is it so important for us to uh, actually love that place and always have that place as a place of um, uh, a love of that place in our heart, a love of that place in our heart. But you know, if you look at the uh, even at the, the the amazing journey of Isra al Mi'raj, you know, Isra al Mi'raj, such a beautiful journey. You know, on that night. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sleep. He was sleeping, and then you know it's to say that his roof opened, and then he saw an animal he never seen before. You know, you know, it was an animal called al buraq I should have answered that question, but anyway, it was an animal called uh, buraq But Subhanallah, uh, before that happened, before that happened, it was a special journey. The angel came and then they opened the heart of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They washed his, uh, his heart with the Zamzam water, you know, and then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mounted the Buraq. Yeah, the Buraq was actually an animal which is white in color. Uh, and it was uh, bigger than a donkey. Yeah, and it's smaller than a horse or a mule. You know, it was a little bit different. But this the Buraq was. So SubhanAllah, when the Burak was actually going, walking, or running, one of the steps of the Burak was like the distance of your eyesight, of where you see. You know, whoop, one more time, it goes, you don't see it. One more time, so the first step, you see, it's already gone all the way there, it's a small dot. The next step, khalas, you don't see the Burak anymore. This is how uh, miraculously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that. Definitely, we know that the Prophet Muhammad uh, set off with one angel, which is always with the Prophet Angel Jibreel on the Burak until they reach Al-Aqsa. 
Yeah. So from Mecca, they've gone to Al-Aqsa. The masjid we are talking about in Jerusalem. Yeah. And then when he went there, by the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he went there and then all the prophets were there and they prayed salah together. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led all the prophets in prayer in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Subhanallah. And after that, we know very well uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallam and the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu sallam and then they went, they went into the different level of, of, of heaven. You know, they met Adam, they met Idris, they met, ha they met Harun, uh, they met uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu sallam. In each and every heaven there was, there was prophets. And then the Pro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, like how we said, and Nabi sallallahu went and then he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is when Allah azza wa jalla gave uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu five daily prayers to pray. And this is the gift. This is the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Prophet. You know, let me tell you something. There is a... Uh, there is something called the year of sorrow. You know, there was the year that the Prophet Muhammad Sallam lost his uncle and his wife. He was so sad, very sad. And the Prophet then, because of his patience, yeah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala invited the Prophet Sallam to him on the seventh heaven, and he had a direct conversation with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He did not see Allah. He did not see Allah, but. He spoke with Allah with a barrier between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the barrier was made of nur. The barrier was made of light. So it shows you. And then from there, came down again. Jibreel brought the Prophet Muhammad Sallam down again to Masjid Al-Aqsa, where the Burak over there were tied. And then from there, came back to Mecca. And this was done in how many days? It was done in a night. It was done in a night. But if ever, of course, if someone comes to you and tells you, Oi, you know what? Yesterday I've gone to uh I've gone to uh, Jerusalem from England uh in one night, would you believe him? Of course not. Yes, I mean you will not believe him. So but even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they did not believe him. You know why? Because, they're like, how could this be done? For you to go on the camel in the desert from here, from Mecca to Jerusalem, I'm going to take you like months. And you saying you went there and you came back. So in the morning when he came, he was telling the people, they were making fun of him. They were making fun of him. But the first one to believe was, of course, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. That's why his name is Siddiq. That's why his name is Siddiq. Siddiq means that he believed in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at a straight point. No matter what he said, and Abu Bakr will always believe. So get what happened. If I tell you something, when the Prophet Muhammad sallam was coming from, when he was coming from, uh, from Masjid Al-Aqsa to Mecca, he saw a caravan with camels coming towards Mecca. Yeah, you know, you see that you look down, so he saw a, car a caravan coming towards Mecca. And then when he went there, he told them, listen, there's a caravan coming from toward, uh, towards Mecca soon. And, it's, and then the, the caravan came, you know, a lot of camels and containers and all. And then many of them believe him through this as well. And okay, if he's saying a caravan is coming because he saw that and really they came, that means yes, he actually went there. And of course, it is a miracle. It is a miracle. And Nabi Sallallahu uh, the Prophet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Azza Wa Jal, spoke with two, uh, uh, direct conversation with two prophets. Who can tell me those prophets? Abida, go on. Musa alayhi salam. And um, Musa alayhi salatu was salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and lay the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is something very, very important for us to know. Therefore, I know the time is ticking. So what, knowing that we love Masjid Al-Aqsa, you see what we learn is the number of prayers, how all the prophets were there and how the Allah Azza wa chose the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make transit. You know transit? You know, when you go from a country to another country, you make transit to Dubai, and then you go to, for example, some place after, you make a transit to Turkey and go somewhere else, you know, from England, Turkey, Turkey to Pakistan, you know, you make a transit, yeah? But the transit chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that journey was Jerusalem. What was it? Al-Aqsa. MashaAllah. It shows you how important it is. And we know very well that because of its sacredness, and of its link towards the Ahlul Kitab, you know, the Jews and the Christian and all the, to, to the three, you know, we have the, 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 the Deen of Samawi, you know, we have the three um, uh, religion that's called the, that has got the Kutub Samawi, like the Muslims and the worship Allah, you know, we got the, we got the, the Christian, and we got the Jews as well. So they're all linked to that, to that land. All of them are linked to that land. So what you can see sometimes that, you know, people are, they are yearning. Everyone, everybody yearns to actually get hold of that land. And that land, of course, if you look at all the prophets that has come, they're all the prophets that says, La ilaha illallah. And that land deserves to remain for those who say, La ilaha illallah. So whenever, if I tell you, if you look, definitely you can see, it's not, it's not, it's not something that we can hide. People are speaking about Palestine. You see people, mashallah, they, they want to keep Palestine. They want to keep the Masjid Al-Aqsa for them. They don't want anything bad to happen to Masjid Al-Aqsa. Because would you like something bad to happen to, uh, to the Kaaba? Would you like something bad to happen, for example, or the people who are living around Masjid, uh, Masjid Al-Nabawi, you know, to feel uh, they're starving and they feel poor, or, you know, they're being, uh, not being treated well? You don't want this to happen. So sometimes when you see, for example, on TV, all this happening, it is because, it is because the love of what we have for that masjid. Yeah, the love of what we have for that masjid. So uh, this is what we, uh, something that we would like to, uh, to share in regards to masjid, masjid al-Aqsa. So we spoke about the Burak, the Salah, the Prophet, Isra al miraj al-Aqsa, and Mecca, and Medina. And you see, all this. So we spoke from the beginning of it, and uh, we spoke about the reward of it, and we spoke about the history of it, how all the prophets are linked to it, and we spoke about how, even at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was there. And Nabi did not undertake any normal journey, he took a journey of, uh, of miracle journey towards that. And you know, it was always, uh, to, for me to end it, as and uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa was always uh, between the ruling of, uh, for example, uh, the ruling of Muslim, and then it was taken by the Christian, and taken by the, by the other, other religion. But then at the time of Umar bin Khattab, or what, the, the history of Umar bin Khattab, when he came, you know, after the death of the Prophet Sallam, Abu Bakr took over. He was the leader for two years. And then after that, SubhanAllah, because the people who were actually owned, owned, they were actually under the, the, the hand of the Jew, of the Christian at that time, Umar bin Khattab, they actually sent a letter and said, listen, we want to give you the key of Masjid Al-Aqsa. So Umar bin Khattab came with a donkey and a servant, and then he came, and then he actually, they were so happy to see Umar bin Khattab, how humble he was, and they're like, oh, he's Umar bin Khattab? They were so happy to see him, and then they gave him the key, then the Muslim took over, without shedding any blood, they were so happy. And then the Muslim had the Masjid, the Kaaba, and the Muslim had the Masjid al Nabawi, and the Muslim, MashaAllah, they had Al-Aqsa for them. And of course, from time to time, political reason goes up and down, but Alhamdulillah, we want the Masjid Al-Aqsa, inshallah. That is why you see sometimes, because they all want to take care of that Masjid. They all love that Masjid. That's why you see sometimes they might be have to have some conflict what you see on TV. The reason why we love Masjid Al-Aqsa is because you could see how our prophets are actually being related to that Masjid bi ta'ala. And inshallah, it's time for you 
hopefully whatever I've spoken about is pretty clear and nice. And I hope that you can undertake the quiz, inshallah, that uh, Sheikh Adnan will put forward, inshallah. Inshallah, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Ayaz, stay with us, inshallah. This is not the end of the session, uh, brothers and sisters. What we will do now, as Sheikh Ayaz said, we're going to do a quiz. Let's see how much you have understood. And also, also let us see who is going to be the winner and the leader of the board, inshallah. So everyone go to your chat section on the chats. I'm going to post the quiz link there. Stay with Zoom, so don't close Zoom, because we're going to come back here um, once you've done the quiz to announce the winners, inshallah. So check the chat section right now. Uh, Thwaybai, are you able to tell me that you can do the quiz, that you're doing the quiz? Put a thumbs up if it is. Excellent, okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Alhamdulillah, amazing. All right, Sheikh Ayaz, if you can unmute yourself, inshallah. Yep. So yep. in terms of winners, Alhamdulillah, we've had hundreds of them participating. MashaAllah, many of them go 100%. So clearly they've been keeping attention, Sheikh, throughout the session, Alhamdulillah. Um, we're really, really happy and pleased with that, Alhamdulillah. And to be honest, everybody who attempted and those who didn't manage to attend or attempt, they're also winners for attempt for attempting in the first place. Mashallah, yeah. So congratulations to everybody. Mashallah, mashallah. So good. So you got a lot of hundred percent there. Beautiful. Allah, alhamdulillah. Many, many mashallah. I've done fantastically well in this uh, competition. That it's hard to tell who is the actual winner because many of them got. 70% accuracy. I'm going to share the screen right now and I'll show you uh, so that you can see hopefully what we are looking at. Uh, where are you? There you are. There. If you can see my screen, can you see my screen? Yay. 70% accuracy, mashallah, from all those who had participated. We had 501 participants. And as you can see on the top, who is it on the top, number one? Hudayfa and Tufayl, Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, beautiful. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah, congratulations. So Hudayfa and Tufayl came to the top because it counts according to speed and also accuracy. So whoever finished wow. first, whoever finished first and whoever got it correct first, they go to the top. And that was Hudayfa and Tufayl. Then came Hiba, then I believe Asim, Uzair, and everyone else. MashaAllah, well done and congratulations to you all. Sheikh, I leave it to you, inshallah, to conclude the session. InshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> this is great. One of the, trust me, loved it. I remember the last time we did something like that was, I think, um, it was last Hajj when we had the, <clears throat> the Arafah, and it was great, it was beautiful. Alhamdulillah, today we have had more participants in regard to knowing the Palestine. Inshallah, Hajj is coming soon, we might have something again like that. You know, uh, uh, Ashura is coming, we may have something like that again. Uh, we may have Isra wal Mi'raj when it comes to Rajab. We are going to have these kind of uh, activities again for you all to participate. If you're all happy about it, we're going to have it again and again and again, inshallah, where you can actually participate and you actually self-assess yourself. You can test yourself how good you have been throughout the, the talk. Because sometimes I might talk for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then afterwards we give a small assessment, then you might forget everything. But like today, inshallah, majority of you have done so well. Yeah, so inshallah, we're going to have this again and again, uh, organized by our beloved brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and admit him, admit him and his family in Jannah al Firdaus al A'la, our brother Abu Ayman Adam. Alhamdulillah, he is the backbone of all the what's happening in Al Haramain. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to bless him 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, uh, bless him and his family for all the time that he gave for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for giving us the opportunity of learning and teaching about the haqq, the, the truth. Barakallahu fiqh, Abba Ayman. And before I leave, and remember that, let me tell you something that you remember at the beginning, we spoke about the ni'mah we are in. You remember in the beginning, we spoke about how we should be thankful to Allah. So when we have, uh, when we have, uh, when we think about, when you look, I'm, I'm sure probably you can have the news. One of the reasons why we're talking about Palestine and Jerusalem, because you look at the news. If you don't look at the news, you can ask your mom and your dad to show you what's happening in, in Masjid Al-Aqsa. What is Masjid Al-Aqsa? You know about it. What's happening now, Masjid Al-Aqsa, your mom and your dad can show it to you, inshallah. So when you see it, you go back to what we said about in the beginning of the lecture. Be thankful to Allah. When you will look at the at what your mom and your dad are going to show you, you will say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You will thank Allah. Thank you, Ya Allah. I have my eyes. I have my mouth. I have my hand. I have food to eat. I have someone to call mama. I have someone to call baba. I have someone to call dad. I have my, my sisters. I have my brothers. I can go outside to the shop without any fear. This is us now. We said, Alhamdulillah. But the people out there right now, they are not having these kind of blessings. They're not enjoying like how we enjoy. Therefore, when we pray every day, we say, oh Allah, make the people of Palestine victorious. So oh Allah, make the people, help the people of Palestine because they're not going through a happy time at the moment. So like how we said, everybody wants, everybody, uh, Everybody wants uh, Al-Aqsa to be safe in safe hand. We need to make dua for them, inshallah. And at the last note, remember that, mashallah, you are the pearls of your mom and dad. You are the gold and the pearls and the diamond of your parents. They love you so much. Alhamdulillah, you worship Allah. And at the same time, mashallah, we want you to obey your mom and your dad. Every day, you thank your mom and your dad. Thank you very much, Mama, for doing this for me. Thank you very much, Dad, for giving this to me. Because they work hard to put a smile on your face. Yeah? Your mom and your dad work so hard to put a smile on your face. Therefore, they deserve your respect. They deserve your obedience towards them. Whenever you feel you're upset, just keep quiet. Always get ready to actually help your mom and your dad in every matter. They want a cup of water. They want you to hold the bag. They want you to come here. They call you. They call you. Yeah, Muhammad, straight away, come. Yeah, Ammar, come straight away. Don't say, yes, I'm coming after. No, no, no. When you love your parents, Allah loves you. When your parents love you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you. And that the third and the third note is that I would say, like how our brother, uh, Ibn Nidhar said, the one who recited the Quran, stick to the Quran. Stick to the Quran. If you want happiness in this world, it's the Quran. You want your mom and your dad to love you, it's the Quran. You want Allah to love you, it's the Quran. You want to get Jannah, it's the Quran. Make sure that you read and revise and memorize the Quran every day, inshallah. And I hope that I see you again. Bismillah ta'ala. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh Ayaz, and Jazakallah khair for again an amazing session, alhamdulillah. We are just at your service trying to make things facilitate and function, and we are not anything without yourselves. So Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Um, all the parents, thank you for encouraging your children to join. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect your family. Please remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And do get involved with Al Harmain Madrasa. Visit the website, see our activities. We're very active, Alhamdulillah. May Allah, give, may Allah give us the ability to be even more active with your help and support. Keep in touch, inshallah. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Al
सुतुना दे बुद्ध सुतुना दे बुद्ध सुतुना